Oh, welcome. Welcome. I, I, uh, I'm I glad to have your, your input tonight. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, just while Wendy's um, um, getting ready to start there, I just maybe uh, remind everybody that um, when you're not speaking or going to speak, if you would please um, mute your, your microphone because uh, it does sort of help uh, the overall quality of the, of the recording and, and allows people to understand things a little bit better. So if you would do that, that'd be great. Thank you. So Wendy, are we um, close to the end of the start? Yeah, it's just, just about there. Oh, just about there. Okay. Yeah. Just takes it. There's a couple steps you have to do. Okay, great. Learning this new technology. Sure. No, take your time. It's all right. Yeah, we, uh, we've we got a few things to cover tonight there. Um, how's everybody doing in the lockdown? Everybody doing okay? You're, you're good to go there now, guys. Okay. In that case, I'll um, I'll call a meeting to order, and um, um, I don't have it in front of me, Wendy. But from memory, I'll just say that uh, I want to pay tribute to um, the Mi'kmaq people, uh, and we're on their their traditional grounds, um, and so pay tribute to the Mi'kmaq people, past, present, and future. Um, I'll move to a declaration of conflict of interest. Uh, if anyone has any conflict of interest on any of the items that we're going to cover today in the agenda, please uh, declare so now. If not, I'll ask for uh, discussion and approval of the agenda. If there's any items that we would like to either change the order of or add any items, or if uh, there are any items that anybody would like to um, see removed, um, now's the time to uh, do so. If not, I'll ask for approval of the agenda. Derek Some Smith moves. Seconded, Gail McDonald. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, we'll now move to the minutes. Uh, the minutes of the November 12th meeting are before you. Um, any uh, additions and deletions uh, or amendments to those minutes that you'd like to see? Your Worship, I didn't vote on the motion to approve the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, you're. Yeah, I got ahead of myself there. Okay. Uh, in terms of the agenda, we'll go back to item number three. Uh, all those in favor of the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, now for the minutes. As I said, uh, any any changes anyone would like to see? If not, I'll ask for a motion for approval of the minutes. So moved. Derek Smith. Smith. Okay, thank I'll, you. I'll second Derek Smith. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Okay. Um, we'll now move to business arising from the minutes. Is there anything in the minutes? that we will not be covering later in the agenda today. Anything that anyone would like to follow up on? Um, Your Worship, uh, there were some questions in regards to police services last month. I, I have a report here, but I would like to present them in the safety services section. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, we're also gonna ask if uh, I understand the RCMP uh, would like to uh, uh, do a presentation uh, from the floor as item number six. So we'll we'll uh, also um, we'll go to um, to that after we do the business arising from the minutes, and we'll do the um, the follow up uh, questions as part of the safety services report. If that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any business arising from the minutes? If not, we'll move on to item number six: presentations from the floor. I understand that. Um, the RCMP would like to um, provide some information as part of a presentation. Uh, 
Uh, I, I believe your worship, they're, they're, they're going to uh, piggyback with me on my report uh, in regards to response time. So we could uh, leave that to that time. That'd be appreciated. Okay, just so we're clear on process, uh, um, the, uh, the, they're here as a, you know, we, if you refer a question to them, Derek, then to, the, to the RCMP, then they, they, uh, they are permitted to, uh, to answer the question. Um, so I, that's the pro, that's the process you're going to use then. Yes, I have uh, have that uh, in my minutes, sir. Okay, I will yield good. the floor. Okay, yeah. very nice. Okay, we'll do that that way then. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to the agenda then. Uh, no presentations from the floor then. Okay, my report is before you, um, and it's um, I guess in terms of um, anything I'd like to add. Uh, I would like to uh, also, I've got to mention that uh, I want to recognize the Stratford Youth Council for their recent fundraising 24 hour walkathon for homeless people. I think that was a fantastic uh, initiative. Um, I'd also like to um, recognize um, an, uh, a Stratford resident, Gary Schneider, who received a national environmental award. Uh, um, and it was, uh, makes, uh, uh, it's a really uh, important award, and I uh, really want to uh, congratulate Gary on that award. As well, I'd like to um, uh, congratulate Eleanor Davies, um, who has provided 35 years to hospice PEI, has been working in palliative care for all that time. Uh, she's past president of PEI Hospice Association, and she's trained many hosp hospice volunteers. Uh, so those, I'd like to, um, to recognize those people as part of, uh, as part of my report. Um, any questions uh, on any part of my report? Okay, if not, I'll uh, move to the uh, CAO report. Uh, Chief Administrative Officer Robert Hughes. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my report is in your package. I'll just highlight a couple of items. Actually, one item um, isn't in the report, and that's the housing demand study. Pleased to report that that was issued this week, the RFP for that. So. Um, that's out uh, for consultants to bid on. It closes, I think, on the 21st of December. Uh, so that project is uh, now underway. Um, community campus, I noted in the agreement uh, or in the notes, uh, still working on the community campus. We have our, our consultant working on the IRAC application and uh, she's also going to uh, do the zoning applications for all three parties, ourselves and the two landowners. Um, we, uh, we're working on an RFP for a conceptual design or kind of a master site plan um, for that. And um, the other item that I wanted to touch on was the citizen budget. Um, I know you're anxiously awaiting um, the citizen budget um, process to engage residents on the long-term spending priorities for the town. But unfortunately, we're just going back and forth with the consultant that I think we're trying to kind of take something that was made for a different purpose um, and use it for this purpose. And uh, it's just not been as easy as we thought or hoped that it would be. Um, but we do wanna make sure that it, it's right uh, and that it works well uh, before we send it out. So I'm sorry that it's late, but uh, we're trying to make a bit of a silk purse out of a sow's ear uh, situation. I, hopefully it will uh, all come out okay and we'll get that out soon. But just in case you were wondering, that's what's happening with that. Happy to answer any questions on anything in the report. Any questions on um, CIO report? Robert, do you? Robert? Robert? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Do you have a new date then for the launch of the uh, citizen budget? No, I survey? wish I did. I wish I did. I just, I'm. I went through it today and it didn't uh, quite do the calculation correctly and they're not sure what's happening with it. So. I, I wish I could say that it's going to be by the end of this week, but I'm just not confident now to say that. <laughs> okay, and we've agreed to uh, extend the deadline then for the uh, for the final report on that. Like, yeah, we'll put it out into the new year. I think we were looking at closing it on January 12th, but we may even have to extend that. Thank yeah, you. The, the thing I'm concerned about, Robert, and, and we can have an offline discussion. I may be a special meeting of council or something to uh, to discuss this, but. Um, I'm concerned that if it gets into the same time frame as our, um, our you know, our community uh, survey uh, that we do every year, that uh, there may be some confusion um, 
among people. And we also don't want them to get survey fatigue either. So uh, we'll, we'll have to have a discussion about that if it gets delayed much longer. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still hopeful that we'll get it out um, in the next week or so. Uh, but we just want to make sure it works properly before we do that. But if we can get it out in the next week, then we'll still be okay. Survey doesn't go live till late January. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, um, back to the agenda then. Uh, safety Services Report, I'll ask Chair Derek, uh, Councillor Derek Smith to, uh, to give his report. Good e evening, everybody. Uh, before I start the report, I just have a brief comment to make. Um, I would like to advise Council of two events this Saturday's past. The first was a checkpoint set up by MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, chapters of PEI. This took place on the Trans-Canada Highway near the new Sharpers Drug Mart and Stratford. The checkpoint was mainly an information reminder not to drive while impaired at any time of year. I want to thank the MAD group for helping the town to advise the citizens of this important fact. The next uh, event was that of the Santa Claus Parade. Due to the situation that we faced this year and because of a Canadian Canada Day success, the town set, town set set up a similar event for Christmas. Uh, there were many volunteers who helped out in these two events. Some were as noted, the Crossroads Fire Department, EMS, Kirk McKinnon of Ocean 100, the MAD Group, town councillors, town staff, and the RCMP. I will note that RCMP officers from Kings, Queens, Stratford, and headquarters detachments were there to give a helping hand. But the most important person of all, of course, was Santa Claus himself. I would hope in saying that from the town of Stratford, we give a big thank you to you, Santa, and your whole group for taking time to wish us a happy holidays. That's just covering off uh, Saturday past regards to uh, the events that took place in town. Um, we can move into safety services next. Uh, the safety services meeting was held on the 23rd of November. Um, the biggest issue we talked about in the last meeting was that of crossing guards. Uh, we had many opinions and points brought up in this point. Uh, the three main ones were stay as status quo, which is probably not acceptable, uh, hiring on crossing guards, or hiring on the light, lighting system that we now have at the No Thrills Horton Park uh, crossing of the Bunbury Road. Uh, we thought it through and we thought we would look closer at the crossing lights uh, for council's consideration. This is due in part uh, to the fact that we believe that the kids should be taught how to cross the street with the crossing lights. Uh, I noticed up in Summerside during a visit there that every school intersection had the crossing lights and they have their flags back up. So uh, I think we should look into that. Um, another reason was that the, there's playgrounds in the school area and I'm sure that the kids are using these playgrounds in the off hours and walk into this playground. And for the citizens who are walking at night and taking a walk, uh, the crossing lights would be there 24 seven. And we thought that that might be a better system. However, that is open to discussion from the council and we'll listen to all avenues. We have not forgotten about the home school nor the school, board, uh, the school teachers themselves and we will be contacting them to see what can be done. Uh, that it was the main crunch of the meeting that we had. Uh, is there any questions on the thing? I'm sure we have some. Councillor Smith, just um, I had a discussion with the chief in Charlottetown about this. And if you want his insight, he'll, he will give it. Um, of course, they've been, we, the city of Charlottetown's been using crossing guards. So he dis, he talked more about the challenges that do exist um, with instituting or implementing the, the crossing guards. So uh, if you want, um, I can arrange a discussion between yourself and him. 
and he can yeah. give you some of that insight? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good that we'll be able to teach the kids and have the older kids teach the younger kids and or parents walking their kids to school how to use those lights. And then that's a teaching method that's outside of the school area, but it's still education. Uh, Councilor Smith, um, I know I bring up the point last week, uh, <clears throat> last month. I believe that uh, we should be hiring some um, people, like uh, retired people, um, with a security vest and site. I believe that they, when the per person's working, they're friendly, they have an eye contact with the vehicle, and there's not, there's, there's not going to be no more going to be any motor vehicle accident. So we have somebody there, a human, the person's going to be talking to the kids and everything else, communicating well. And it's going to create jobs for people that are retired, somebody older people, older folks that want to go out and, and, and put some time into the town. But I don't believe in the in the mission, like your lights. I just uh, I know that experience. Uh, I know Cornwall is looking at differently in Charlottetown, and I know it's a liability issue. And maybe um, we can start there. Maybe the RCP can um, take the training and throw throw that to our crossing guard. So that's where I'm where I'm standing from. I believe that uh, it should be a human being deal with the kids, making the kids safe. And what Jill said last week, the surrounding areas, this new school coming in place now, the traffic getting large and everything else. We get that new school over Mason, they're coming across that highway. It's going to be dangerous. So we're going to need crossing guards. We're not going to need lights. We're going to need people, human beings there, working the kids. Okay. In, in regards to the high school, I think we should uh, bear in mind the age of the children going into that school. Um, they're they're more grown up. However, I mean it's open for discussion. I, I'll, I'll not disagree with you. It's uh, but it will be a teaching method. Uh, the, we can't be there twenty four seven. And as I said, uh, there's playgrounds in the area, and the kids will be go probably going to the playgrounds. And uh, it's nice to have them educated, stuff like that. But we will yeah. talk about crossing guards. Yep. I mean, you look. You looked at the cost of seven or eight thousand dollars, and we we claw back one year in that survey, and we pay fifteen or twenty. That's you know that's a win-win by us. So I'm just saying, yep. we can put there. You know, you mean there? Yep. Okay. So we'll we'll discuss that at the committee as a whole and um, go Thank from you. there. Thanks, Derek. Councillor Smith. Uh, can you hear me, Councillor Smith? Yes, I can hear you. Go yeah, ahead. Okay. Um, uh, I sort of agree with you a little bit on the on the lights, uh, crossing lights. I, I'd like to know more about that. Um, I'm looking forward to having this discussion at a committee of the whole. And uh, if you could bring all the information that you have on the lights, uh, I'm certainly aware of uh, what goes on with the crossing guards in Charlottetown. And uh, uh, I think it's gonna be a good discussion uh, at the committee of the whole. I think it's a, a budget uh, item that we will be discussing in January. So. Yeah. Um, I think uh, uh, bring the information to the meeting, and I think we'll all have a good discussion on that. Yeah. I mean, we, all, we, we, we cannot forget everybody that lives in Stratford, and including some seniors who walk at night. Yeah. And we all know that uh, crossing the street at night, it could be a, a touchy thing. So anyway, we'll discuss that at a later date. Yeah, yes, right. Smith. Right. Just, oh. Go ahead, Jill. I just want to mention just, that I will, I will ask that it be put on the agenda for our next committee of the whole. Uh, if we have the information, we have the recommendation from the Safety Services Committee. Uh, and if we have the information, I think uh, Councillor McDougall's uh, suggestion is a good one that we ask, uh, you know, if there's information from the Charlottetown um, uh, jurisdiction that uh, would be useful to us that we, we look into that as well. Sorry, uh, Councillor Burridge, go ahead. Um, I think it'd be good to have input um, from the home and school associations, both schools, Stratford Elementary and Gwen Stewart, as well as the administration of both schools um, for that committee of the whole discussion. It'd be nice to have that done prior to that. I'd be interested to see what they have to say or what their preference would be or what they see. They're out there every morning um, watching how things go down. And um, and I do, I do think this should be looked at a little bit bigger picture as well, because there's kids crossing busy intersections throughout the community. Um, um, so just maybe identifying those key routes or those, um, those maybe concerning intersections and um, making sure that the crosswalks in those areas are, 
there, the ones that are needed and also um, very well marked. Um, so I would like to see that discussion taken a bit further um, okay. throughout the community, if it could go there. Um, just as a footnote, uh, if we do talk to the city of Charlottetown, which we will, I think we should all co also contact the city of Summerside. Uh, they have gone with the crossing lights and the flag system, and we'll see how that's working out up there. Okay. One, one thing to remember, uh, Councillor Smith, is that the uh, Charlottetown police look after the crossing guards in Charlottetown. Uh, I guess the question will be to the RCMP if, if they're willing to take that on uh, to, look, to look after that for us. So. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Okay. So it's further discussion and we'll, we'll do that. Actually, it'd be interesting to see the RCMPs um, to get their input as well. Maybe you already have that within that discussion you already had, but um, yeah. what they would, you know, what they think might work best there as well. Well, I, I have a feeling that every morning and every day, school day, when they're not busy on priority one calls, I think the main focus is the patrolling of the school areas. Oh yeah. I could be mistaken on that, but I think that's their main concern area, keeping an eye on traffic and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Smith, if, I, if I could just make one comment, uh, there was five other intersections that, that were identified uh, in our meeting that we were going to look at and that map was included in the package. So I can give that map to you, uh, Councillor Burge for your uh, purview. Perfect, I missed that. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Councillor Smith. Yes, Matt. Uh, as well, of course, since the uh, province uh, owns the roads here in Stratford, uh, it would be incumbent for us to uh, get their opinion on it as well, especially if we're going with the lights. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, if we have no more questions on safety services, we can move on to the RCMP report. Yeah. Okay, uh, Okay. before I start, I do have a statement here uh, and it reads as such, uh, 9th of December, 2020. At last month's council meeting, some, some councillors had some well thought of questions in regards to the policing of Stratford. These questions couldn't be answered at that time due to the fact that they are both complex and in depth. I felt to answer the, these inquiries, I would also be need, needed to give some time as the council has in preparing them. I have broken these inquiries into four groups, monthly stat sheet, survey results, response timelines, and operational duties. Tonight, with the help of the town staff and the RCMP, I hope all of the above can be clarified to the betterment of all parties. Topic number one, the monthly stat sheet. Uh, during the past month, I have met and discussed these points with the RCMP. And then with the help of Councillor McDonald, I have reviewed the outcome. I hope that tonight the stat sheet is what has been requested. However, if improvements are needed, then the work will continue. I want to thank Janine from the Stratford RCMP for helping us out in this request. Uh, number two, survey results. The question arose about the annual survey in regards to police services within Stratford. While researching this point, I noticed that the town of Kensington recently did a police study. In their study, the citizens were asked to rate their police force. To me, it looks like the results of their survey and the results of our residents' questions about policing rendered very similar results. Although I am no expert in the field of statistics, the questions asked of our residents about policing were quite similar to those of the town of Kensington. Our rating system were based on four levels, a great deal of confidence, some confidence, not very much confidence, or no confidence at all, or don't know, no answer. And looking at the overall levels of policing in both communities, I believe both have a very high rating. The differences between the two police forces is the type of police force and the number of officers at each location. Actually, just maybe this is a sample of the overall view of the people of PEI. 
In closing, these results show that the people of Stratford at this point have a high rating of policing within the community and that of the RCMP. Uh, the response timelines. The next topic was that of the response timelines. On this point, we have the RCMP to answer to this concern and to share their findings. I will yield the floor to them when they're with the results after reading the rest of my remarks. I would like to point out that when that, the question was asked, Chief Superintendent Ebert had the question answered within hours. I want to personally thank the Chief Superintendent and her team on the quick and accurate answers provided. Operational duties. The next day, statement will deal with the above named subject. Uh, one question was asked whether there was a police car on patrol at this particular time in Stratford. I was unable to answer that question due to the fact that I don't have the answer, nor do I have the answer now. However, I would like to point out that I did have the information. I would not give it out in a public forum. The reason for this is because of, of the both public and officer safety. Police in North America have policies to cover off such information. If a situation arises and there is a clear and present danger to the public, then the Amber Alert system is sent out in order to try to maintain peace and order in the area. Uh, the statement was made that the RCMP works for the town. This might be the case, but I would argue the citizens have a contract with the RCMP and in this agreement, the RCMP through their internal means conduct the way the police work is carried out. I would like to think that the town has formed a partnership with the RCMP. Another question uh, was asked of the placement of an officer, Stratford officers to other locations as needed. I would like to point out that on, in the contract for police services, this is covered under section nine in which it states, the RCMP have the right to deploy members to cover an emergency in any regions of Canada. It also states that the town will bear no cost and that these members to the of these members and the equipment of this deployment. We must realize that if the town was in need of additional resources to cover an emergency within Stratford, then I am sure, as in past events, the RCMP will bring in additional help as needed. In short, this section works both ways. I also strongly believe that as a town, we have in the past and the future shared our resources to help others in the need of the causes as the call arises. An example of this would be the emergency testing site for the COVID-9 virus that set up in town hall during this time due to increased demand for testing. Please study. Due to the population growth of Stratford, businesses and other infrastructure services, I believe that the council should be proactive in conducting a police study to clarify what is needed and both the number of officers and the type of police services needed. With this in mind, we have requested the provincial government conduct a study on these points. Within the study, the question of regionalization of police force of policing will be asked. I strongly believe that this study will help us with our questions. I look forward to this, and given the chance, I would like to contribute to the conversation. I would also think that all sides be given a chance to give their opinion and or solutions. These sides would be, of course, the two police forces that we have in the area, but also we would need import from our businesses, citizens group and residents and, and more and many other groups. As I have said in the past, it is my policy not to give comments on ongoing studies or negotiations. I will let the study be done and make an informed decision on the behalf of the town citizens. We must remember that this creates a lot of emotions and that is part of any study. But in the end, we should look at the facts of the findings and make a decision on these points. I will now yield the floor to the RCMP to cover off more detail the response timelines and any, co any other comments they have in this report. After this, if the council have any questions to above points, please feel free to ask them. Thank you for your time and response. Uh, having said that, I guess we'll let the RCMP now in and speak to the response timeline. Certainly, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, just in response to the uh, 911 response times, um, through reviewing our CAD events, which is our computer database, it was found that the average response times for 911 calls at Stratford is just over 11 minutes from the time we're dispatched to the time we arrive on scene. So hopefully that uh, 
puts uh, people at ease. Um, we are responding uh, to these calls in a timely manner. When the call is dispatched, it'll actually record the time and the time arrived. Um, as you mentioned, the uh, policing review, I mean, that happened in 2017 and there was uh, many suggestions put forward. I know the commanding officer and, and your worship have talked, so um, I won't speak to that, but um, I've, I've got one week down of my self-isolation and I'll be back at the home in another week. So working from home, uh, phone is on. If there's questions or concerns, uh, let me know. Okay, thank you, Corporal. So we'll open the floor from the councillors to have any discussions. Yeah, okay. I just want to uh, comment there for a sec, if I can. Um, just a few things. First, the other, at our last meeting, um, I had a discussion about I, I provided some anecdotal evidence and I, I used uh, numbers from from our resident survey just to, in an attempt to illustrate a point. Um, in doing that, you know, I, I, it's when you're dealing with a lot of moving parts and you're attempting to illustrate a point, sometimes that gets fumbled. And um, in this case, uh, some of what I was trying to illustrate may very well have been. But what I, what I neglected to say, Corporal Dudley, in, in that presentation was that uh, we as councillors, and I know from speaking to residents, that the six members we employ with the town, I apologize, <laughs> we have kids here, um, are, are exceptional police officers who, who are also primarily residents of the community. And I did uh, fall short of... of, of uh, introducing that commentary and it should have been very relevant because I know as a counselor I've never received a single complaint about individual members of, of our force here in Stratford and I, I hear nothing but praise and, and uh, my experience with the officers here too has been nothing but positive so I did fall short of, of uh, illustrating those points so I wanted to make that uh, clear here tonight <clears throat> and secondly um, I don't think what I was attempting to illustrate was, was specifically about the, the response times as much as it is about the fact that um, in Stratford, the officers are, are, are tasked with responsibilities outside of the town. And uh, the point I was attempting to illustrate was that it leaves a gap. Uh, one that uh, personally, I, I, I think we should address and that gap, if, if, if a, a resident does call, there is a reasonably high probability or too high of a probability, I guess is how I should frame it, that uh, somebody may not be responsible or, or uh, available to respond uh, in a timely manner. Like the, the, the point I was illustrating was that the, uh, the probability is too high yeah, and that's, uh, that's an, an opinion based on, on knowledge that I have. So just wanted to clear up a, a couple of points there, Councillor Smith. Yep. Well, thank you for your commentary. Uh, it is appreciated, Darren. Um, we'll leave your uh, inquiries to the RCMP and they can follow up uh, with a, an email back to us, if that's okay with you. Yeah. So, do we have any uh, other questions from councillors uh, in regards to last month? I just want to say that um, Corporal Dudley did refer to a, a conversation that I had with um, Chief Superintendent Ebert, and um, uh, we both agreed that uh, we do look at, need to look in, in line with uh, Councillor McDougall's uh, comments. We do need to look at the policing model uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, uh, accountability for, you know, time spent in, in Stratford uh, by uh, police officers uh, and that information she undertook to, uh, to provide to us uh, on a regular basis. Uh, so, so that, that information will be, will be provided uh, and hopefully that'll address some of the, uh, some of the concerns. Uh, and in terms of the overall uh, approach to the model, I think the, um, the provincial follow-up to the 2017 um, police study 
the analysis that they do as a follow-up will provide us with a lot of good information that we can use to move forward to, to, uh, uh, to address the, the need for a new model, uh, whether that be uh, in terms of resources or uh, capabilities or, or, or you know, the, the type of, of um, um, things that we need in, in Stratford. So uh, anyway, thank you for that, uh, Councillor McDougall. And, uh, um, that's a, that's a, those are my comments just as a follow up to, uh, to our meeting. So hopefully this uh, presents an opportunity for improving our relationship uh, moving forward. Thank you. I believe in the end that uh, everybody's main concern is for the citizens of Stratford. They have a safe community, uh, not only in regards to uh, some things that go on, but also for the safety and the health of the members of our communities as in the COVID thing. So it's a team effort and we'll continue working on it. Okay, uh, there's no more questions. Uh, we can move on to the uh, the RCMP report. Um, some outstanding things from last month. Uh, if you notice that uh, Janine has done a, a better system up for us this month, uh, there are some blank spaces uh, on the report, but at, this basically means that there was no activity on that month. So uh, they just press a button, they generate the report off their computer system, and if there's nothing in those blanks, it doesn't come up as a zero, it just remains blank. Um, traffic occurrences on the top of your page, traffic collisions for the month was 16, was getting a little high. Uh, 911 calls were nine. Uh, on the provincial statute, uh, municipal bylaws. I noticed that the RCMP responded to four calls this month in regards to our bylaw. Indice checks were at 69, and the uh, number of tickets issued for the month were at 28, and uh, all the other numbers seems to be of uh, standard uh, things. Any questions from the councilor on uh, the stat sheet that we have? One of the things, Councillor Glenn, I, I believe is seems to be up significantly is the uh, traffic collisions. Is that right, 16 last month? That's- um, Yes, 16. Yes, that, that's yeah. getting- yeah. Then there's no that's snow down there. Yeah, that's up quite a bit from yeah. other months, I believe. Yeah. And uh, on our uh, statistics sheets tonight, the, uh, it'll show the accident uh, locations and the uh, blue, I believe. So, okay, if there's no more questions on statistics sheets, we can uh, move Councilor, on. To Councilor Smith? Yep. I would just like to uh, thank you and uh, the RCMP there for fixing that report so that we do have a uh, month over month and year over year um, just statistical uh, report. I appreciate the comment. And thank you for helping me out. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the uh, the next one. And that is the mayor's report for the past month. Uh, you'll notice the collision uh, locations on the top of your page. Um, it doesn't seem to be in one area. It seems to be all over uh, the area. You notice the ticket violations for the month, uh, six speeding tickets, 199 moving, one seat belt, uh, one was moving, um, drug while disqualified was one for a total of 28. Um, the warnings give, were given there. It looks like a pretty standard month for the RCMP in regards to calls. There was really nothing outstanding uh, there to report on. Uh, we can then move on to the uh, last sheet. Could you give me a, a Councillor Smith? Could you give me an update on transit in Ward Three? There, we haven't come to that point yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you do that before you move oh. on to the next one? Well, when I give my transit report, it'd be okay then. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the last two pages of the last report. Uh, the RCMP have broken down their uh, response times to different things. Uh, I noticed that quite a bit of time was uh, 
served in traffic related duties, whether it was at the schools monitoring, attending traffic accidents, track and traffic enforcements and stuff like that. Uh, there's quite a bit of time spent on the traffic related duties. So uh, maybe we could look at in the future, uh, somebody dedicated full, uh, half time or full time to look after traffic situation within the town of Stratford. However, that's part of the study and you know my views of that, I'm not comment. So that's it for the RCMP report, uh, unless we have any other questions. Okay. If not, we'll move on to the Humane Society. Uh, the Humane Society is pretty standard again. Uh, they patrol, they open cases, they close cases, and there's really nothing there that's outstanding to the council's attention. Uh, they just do a good job, as I said in the past. We'll move on to transit. Uh, transit was down a little bit again this month. However, uh, we should note that we did have a, a COVID scare on one of the bus routes. That will or should affect our ridership. Uh, so that with next month, it might be down a little bit and because of the month that it's in, but it, uh, it appears that the younger people are using the buses to get to work, to get to their place of uh, schooling. So that's good. Um, I have nothing further to discuss in regards to the transit service within Stratford. I think this is the time of year in the COVID area, area that we're in. There's not too much talks going on unless Jeremy Crosby has something to add to that. Okay. But well, we have not forgotten. Go ahead, Jeremy. No, I have nothing to add. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, um, I forgot to mention uh, Section B, which is Street Light Report. Uh, there is nothing to report this month. However, street lights uh, locations and requests were mentioned at the last safety services meeting. The, these locations are being checked into and we might have a recommendations in uh, January of 2021 in regards to new street lighting within the town. Okay, the, the last one is the fire report. Councillor uh, Councilor Smith. Yes, go ahead. Ward three report uh, on transit. Yeah, um, basically uh, because of the time of year, because of the situation that we are in, uh, there's nothing to report. We have not forgotten about you, but until we get this area covered off, I think it's it's getting to almost discuss at budget time now. We're getting to that time of year. Yep. And um, I think that um, I know you feel passionate about it, as we all should. And uh, I think it should be a good uh, thing to bring up at budget time. Absolutely. Thank Smith. you. Councillor Smith, I believe that um, we did um, um, make some decisions and recommendations with regard to this, and I'll ask uh, maybe uh, maybe you could ask uh, Chief Administrative Officer Hughes to uh, provide the information that he may have about the status of, um, I know that there was a year long um, wait for the buses. We tried to get many buses and the uh, uh, they were not available uh, and the price range was such that uh, there was basically the same price as the full size buses. Maybe we could ask, if you, if you don't mind, maybe we could ask Chief Administrative Officer Hughes to, uh, to comment on this. Yeah, I yield the floor to Robert Hughes. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I actually don't have the details on the latest bus order. I'll have to ask Jeremy for that, if, if that's what you're referring to. Um, we did, though, um, submit a long-term capital plan for, um, in, in conjunction with Charlottetown and Cornwall, uh, to indicate what we need in a, on a go-forward basis for buses um, with the infrastructure funds that are available, um, including electric, uh, moving to electric buses. Uh, so, uh, Jeremy, could you comment on the current bus order? There have been some delays on the minibuses due to uh, COVID-19 and, and the manufacturing process. Um, and, you know, they're still intended to be delivered in, the, in 2021, but uh, we don't have a firm date at this point. 
with regard to the pilot program, ourselves in Charlottetown are still looking at uh, getting some information and uh, researching that a little bit further, but we felt that that because of uh, COVID-19 and some of the restrictions in place, that uh, wouldn't be the best time to do it right now, but we are revisiting that now. And uh, I did get an email from, from one of the uh, on-demand transit providers uh, that does provide information on this research the other day. So we may be able to start that back up soon. So uh, we certainly haven't forgot, forgotten about this and um, we still intend to try to do a pilot program at some point, or at least have the information for council to make an appropriate decision. Thank you, Jeremy. So another, in short, it's ongoing. Okay. Uh, We'll move on to the fire next. Um, you, uh, just before you do, Councillor Smith, I'd just like to commend uh, Deputy Mayor Klo for uh, his um, perseverance in, uh, in trying to, to get uh, transit in Ward 3. I, I too feel that uh, I'd like to see uh, transit, um, uh, at least on a pilot basis or, or um, a, a non-demand service or some sort of service to uh, provide transit service to Ward 3, I think, um, you know, it is something that's, uh, that's needed. I think it's something that, um, you know, we all want to, uh, to have in place. It just seems to be really difficult to get it done right now, but I just want to commend them for continuing to, uh, um, to persevere, to, to try to get that, uh, that at the front, the front burner. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to add that the, the Deputy Mayor is being proactive. He's been on council for a number of years and he has seen the growth of this town and he realizes the town is going to continue to grow and the transit system is needed for the people now, but will be really needed in a couple of years time when the population starts moving here on mass. So uh, it's future thinking on his part. Thank you. So on record, going on record too as Councilor as council war three and Myself and Gary talk about it all the time, but as Gary being a veteran and uh, just taking a lead, lead and role there, so, but uh, I agree 100% Ward 3 uh, is an equal opportunity for all residents in the town of Stratford to have a, a bus service transit, uh, especially with Fulton's Marsh now and things gone to go in the Ward 3 and especially with the school, uh, the new uh, campus and so on. And uh, hopefully we'll see that day come sometime. Okay. Thank you for all for your comments. Thanks, Derek. So we'll move on to um, the fire department next. Uh, the fire department's report is enclosed. Uh, the, we had two reported fires this month, uh, electrical fire light fixture and, and fire, electrical fire and an oven. Um, I was talking to Kevin Reynolds. Uh, there was nothing outstanding about neither one of these fires. Uh, it was put in there for mints and maple services. If you have any questions, I will yield the floor to Kevin if he's available to answer any questions on those. Eric, I, or Councilor Smith, I don't have a question, but some, some commentary. Growing up in, in, in Crossroads, I've been uh, exposed to the um, to the Crossroads Fire Department since I was a kid myself. And uh, just to see them the other day at the parade and how they take those initiatives on, uh, not to mention what they do uh, on, on a daily basis as far as the fires are concerned, but uh, what they bring to the community. <clears throat> just watching that parade the other day, um, it just brought me back to my childhood and, and the memories I had of the fire department Crossroads back then. And they continue to this day to contribute so much to the community in so many different ways. And I just wanted to, to tip my hat to all the fire guys. And I'll, I'll, I'll echo that because we have the time too, because on Saturday, they also helped out with the checkpoint in Med and they had a number of fire trucks on the Trans-Canada Highway and helping us put up pylons and keeping us all safe. So uh, the, I think the full department was probably out on Saturday helping in either event. Great to see. Yeah, they're a great part, big part of the community. All right, uh, if there's no more comments, I do, uh, I, Your Worship, I have a, a resolution here tonight. Is this the time to read it in now? Uh, 
Uh, that, that's under uh, committee appointments. This is later on the agenda. Okay, thank you. I'll leave it till then. So uh, that's my report for this month. Uh, I'll open the floor for any follow-up questions. If not, we'll move on to the recreation department. Okay, thank you very much for your report, Councillor Smith. I'll now ask uh, Councillor Steve Gallant, uh, Chair of uh, Recreation, uh, Culture and Events to, um, to give his report. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's uh, the reports in front of everybody there, and uh, I'm just going to go over a few paragraphs there. And uh, um, uh, we had a Zoom meeting on December first. Uh, agenda items include updates on a waterfront park, community campus, and active transportation projects. A review of ex existing and future programs, and a recent use of Stratford Town Center as an emergency COVID testing site. Um, that went over well. Uh, the last couple of days, Jeremy uh, Pierce and his team and, and the whole team, was Crosby and so on, uh, took charge of that and went over really well. Positive comments through the community and, and shows that she, Trafford uh, put us on the map there. So reached out there to the Department of Health. Um, I also want to special thanks to committee members, Ted Lawler, Jenna Compton, Ken Wakeland, Mike Duggan and Kyle Hand for their efforts and contributions over the past two, two years. We look forward to work with returning new committee members. The Arts and Culture Committee met on um, December 3rd, and uh, as you saw on Compass last night, the Red Wing Blackbird, with an interview with our Mayor, uh, Your Worship Steve, Steve Ogden, and everything was went right over really well. Uh, uh, it was, it's, it's, it's just, uh, Gerald was there, the, the artist, it's, uh, it's a beautiful piece of art. Uh, it just blends with the, with the Fuller's Marsh and so on, and it's, and it's, you just look at it, it's healthy, with the playground and it's going to be in the background and, and the walking trails, it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, one of its own there, one of its kind. So it's, and then Gerald, but the thing weighs 400 pounds and the bird is six feet and the stand itself is 18 feet. So you're not going to miss it. So things went over well there. It was a great interview by our mayor there on Compass last night. So, but anyway, and another thing is um, we, uh, an RFP has been reissued for the artists and residents visual arts program for youth to run from January to March, 2021. Deadline is December 9th, today, 2020 for proposals. Additional RFPs have been issued for 2020-21 interactive public art piece of Pondside Park and 30 indigenous musical in instruments for to Stratford Elementary School. Deadline for both RFPs are January 6, uh, 2021. As other arts programs are all up and going uh, with, with the last couple of weeks, of course, everything was shut down. Um, our Stratford Youth Center Council, there are 57 youth members in grades five to 12. It's, uh, it's uh, Dwayne and his staff are doing a tremendous job down there. And every time I go to a function, uh, the, the kids are, uh, teens are, are so positive and the, the smiles on the faces, it's un unbelievable. It's, you know, they're part of Stratford and up and coming. So it's, it's great to see that and Dwayne take charge there. Um, they had the walkathon on November 20th. Uh, it was canceled back in May. Members of the Youth Council took turns walking for 24 hours straight in the town hall while collecting donations. In total, the group walked a combined 177 kilometers and raised over $2,300 for their youth group. Each member walked between 15 and 25 kilometers through the day. The Stratford Youth Council Youth Center are now selling the Christmas raffle tickets for a chance to win $500 gift cards at Sobeys. Tickets are $5 each or three for 10. Draw date is on December 21st. Proceeds from the Christmas raffle goes towards the Holiday Helping Hands Project. Each year they put together care packages for the homeless on PEI, as well as, as help support some local families who need to supply Christmas gifts for children. Um, the Stratford Youth Center will be hosting their annual holiday party and youth uh, volunteer awards on Friday, December 18th. Um, that's probably canceled now because of, of what's happened in the last couple of weeks, uh, or Dr. Morrison. Um, the Strapper programs uh, would be all coming to a halt here. Uh, the jump started, so everything's come to a halt. Uh, we installed nine new fit bench signs are being installed along Halls Avenue and Fulton's Creek Conservation Park. The successful initiative will continue to be expanded upon more signs being installed at various benches around Strapper. The signs are funded through a government PEI wellness grant. So uh, we have some signs in front of the town hall, uh, uh, 12 to 14, uh, stations there for uh, doing uh, people walk around and want to be fit, get fit, uh, take some exercise and so on. And with, with COVID and everything else on the go now outside, the fresh air is, is, is pretty positive. And with all this to people in that area and uh, War 3, I really appreciate that. 
The annual Christmas in the Park event continues in 2020, minus the children's activities. The town has added its complement to Christmas decorations to the Park Town Center, Stratford Emergency Center, and other locations around the town. To compensate for the lost children's events, Stratford organized Santa, Santa's Motorcade to help held on Saturday, December 5th, begin at 2 p.m. from the town center, town of Stratford, the Stratford RCMP, Highway Safety, and Crossroads Fire Department led to the, their motorcade. Um, Green Diamond Equipment provided a 20-inch trailer, truck, and tractor for Santa to be well seen as he traveled through Stratford, wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas. The Stratford New Year's Levy um, has been canceled for 2021. Um, this is not good. This is my, on my third year in council. I'm, I'm one for three here. <laughs> um, the town will look to continue on the tradition of after one year absence in January 2022. The town will offer an annual art expo through online form throughout the month of January and will expand the annual Stratford Winterfest to be a monthly long celebration of winter activities. Details will be released in January, but residents will be offered the opportunity to participate in public outdoor skates, snowshoeing, cross country skiing, and sledding events around the town. Also, I call, encourage our residents to uh, take a visit down there's Cotton Park. Uh, there's, the, the Christmas lights down there are beautiful, the kids and, and so on. If you're walking through the park, the trails and so on. I like to invite people to walk through our beautiful trails, uh, especially with the, the lockdown, not the lo semi-lockdown now, we're two weeks here, just get out and, and explore our trails. And uh, that's my report there, Your Worship. Well, thank you for your report, Councillor Smith. Any questions for, for Councillor Smith? Very, um, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, so I'm going to chime in here with some some commentary a bit, and of course, Matt, this is my version of Gary's uh, Ward Three bus service, the uh, um, the hockey rink. Um, just some commentary there, Councillor Deland. I did have a conversation with a fundraiser, uh, one of the committee members in the fundraising effort in in Rustico. And she's going to uh, acquire a, a template that they used. Okay. Funds. Um, uh, she just gave me a couple of brief examples. They they reached out to the corporate community and, uh, for example, Dion Fanuf sponsored a dressing room, and that sponsorship cost was twenty thousand dollars. So, those types of sponsorships uh, that they sought from the community, and, and were successful in in raising millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, Hillside Motors was a keynote sponsor whose name is going to go on the boards and whatnot. But we, we'll, we'll come to that point. But I think we should sooner than later uh, strike a committee to start doing what Rustico did. And uh, I'll, I'll have that template for you. And perhaps we can start there. And of course, Jeremy Pierce is on here. Um, one other thing that I wanted to highlight, too, when it comes to the conversation about the rink. And there's other things I would like as well for our community as the residents do. A curling rink would be great, additional ball field, soccer fields, um, all of that too. I don't want to exclude that, but uh, I, I, had, I took a, and I'll call it an informal poll, uh, just of people in my, my little community, uh, most of which have children involved in hockey. And uh, the numbers of dollars that leave our community, um, and I can speak to myself, uh, I eat out more now in Montague than I do in Stratford. I get more gas in, Stra in Montague than I do in Stratford. Yeah. We're three, four nights a week in Kings County. My wife shops at, uh, at uh, the uh, superstore in Montague. So exactly. all of those dollars too, it's important to highlight that. Um, go when, when, when our, our parents uh, are dropping their kids off and want to go for a coffee. Um, they're in Belfast. They're going to Bobby Cooper's store, which is great for Bobby Cooper, and he's a friend of mine. And uh, you know, I wouldn't want to take that away from him. But these are the things that are happening in our community that these dollars and and uh, whatnot are leaving Stratford. It's such a big number. There's a thousand kids registered in minor hockey. Yeah. So every parent I talk to um, is is practicing in Kings County, spending money there, which is great for mm -hmm. Kings County. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, I want those dollars to be kept in, in Stratford. So that's a big part of, of what we want to accomplish here by bringing that facility into the town. Thank you, uh, Councillor McDougall. Uh, talking, uh, talking to businesses, um, talking to businesses within our community would likely round up a lot of support. And I think there's people already working on that um, just to, you know, get the business community behind this. But 
and we do tend to talk about minor hockey quite a bit. Um, but there's uh, a huge ringette community in Stratford yes. that have to travel quite a bit. And there's actually, there's a lot of people who just want to go out and skate. They just want to go to a family skate and or seniors or um, um, whomever just want to go out for a, a leisurely skate. But there's very minimal ice time for something like that these days um, because all the ice times chewed up with the minor um, sports organizations. Speed skating is another one. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a huge need. But even beyond that, um, you go to Summerside, and the center there. Now, granted, ours won't be to that to that level, but um, but it is a community hub, absolutely. Yes. Um, and and I think that's the piece that excites me almost the most is um, the community hub that you create in yeah. your town. Um, and I think that's going to be exciting with a walking track around it and, um, more benefits that way for wellness. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in support of this. Thank you, Councilman Burridge. Thank you. One, one more comment. I was, uh, I, I, and this is, this is, uh, unqualified information, but when I conducted these polls, I had a couple of people say to me, you know, per capita. Uh, they're of the belief that we have the most rinks per capita in Canada. And I had the argument that, yeah, we likely do. And you know what? I would argue that Stratford is the largest municipality in the country without a rink. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Uh, uh, Councillor Galant, I'd like to make a couple of observations. Um, number one, I want to thank your department for setting up this uh, Christmas Day parade. Uh, it was well appreciated. I believe uh, Tanya Craig is setting up uh, a, a program that counselors can give a, a message out in the new year. And that's going to be kind of like our levy this year. We're going yeah. to be giving a little comment, little speeches, if you so desire. Yeah. And I want to comment uh, to the recreation department for both being both prepared and ready for the COVID testing sites. Uh, Jeremy Paris's leadership and your guidance is mostly appreciated. I think that we're not through it yet. Uh, we might need a vaccination site yet. So uh, it's a job well done for, uh, from everybody and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. It's, it's uh, great to show our town. Go ahead, Gail. You have a question, Gail? Okay. I think um, not, a, not a question, but uh, I like—I I certainly do like the idea of a rink and everything that goes around uh, with the rink, and I, I think it's important for our community, and I think we should have one. But you know, I think it's a—it's a budget item that will be discussed probably in the new year. Uh, we have a lot of things on the table here that we're dealing with, like we're taking our pipe to Charlottetown. Uh, we're looking at this community campus. We just spent over $2 million on land. Uh, we're looking at our waterfront uh, park, which is going to cost a lot of dollars. So, um, you know, you're talking crossing guards. It's another budget item. So we have a lot on the table that we have to look at. And I'm all for this rink that you're talking about. Uh, but perhaps we'll have to give up something to get the rink, like uh, the waterfront park or, or going any further with the community campus. Uh, we can have the campus, we have the land, we can put the rink on that, of course, but I think we have to get our priorities straight. Uh, it's all going to be a tax increase, no matter what we do. So there will be a survey, I understand, coming out that will we'll look at that increase. So I think there's a lot on the table to discuss here with that. I'm in favor of a rink, but uh, with all the other things on the table, I think we have to get our priorities straight and do like one thing at a time. We just finished our emergency service center, which was over budget. Uh, you know, we're taking our pipe to Charlottetown, which is over budget. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'd love to have all this stuff and it all sounds good. And I, I like what Councillor McDougall said about people coming on board like uh, Fanuf 
in uh, sponsoring the dress room. And I'm sure we have all kinds of that in Stratford, but I think we just have to be careful with our tax base going forward. And uh, I think we have to really look at this and have a real good discussion at committee the whole on this topic. And I know it will be discussed with the budget and get the residents involved and see where they are with it and, uh, and go forward with it. Yeah. So. I, I concur with your concerns, uh, Councillor Klo, but uh, with the sports campus and 170 acres of land there, it's, it's a, an opportunity and we have to report back to our residents, sure. But I, I'm looking at a, a three-way here, like the federal, provincial, and then private sector, and then the fundraising. So uh, hopefully that way that it'll be in interest to our community that way. It's just not going to be a big ticket item. I'm just looking at hopefully our partners. Uh, we, we initiate a fundraising campaign by Council McDougal said and uh, have our corporate business and then hopefully have support of the provincial government with the with, uh, same as Rustico had and then the federal government too. Uh, hopefully from a member of, uh, of, uh, of Lawrence McCauley there, that'd be, be great support there, help us there. So, but anyways, uh, I know where your concerns are and I have the same concerns. I mean, we, we're, our responsibility is for the residents of Stratford and, 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 the, and the money's there and, 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 and so on. So I, I, I concur where you're coming from. Okay, so, so this will be um, discussed at, uh, I, I, we did have it in the minutes last uh, meeting that we would uh, strike a committee to look at this. Uh, yeah. We will have the information from the, um, the long the survey uh, uh, to to assist us, and and it will be part of budget discussions. Uh, but I, yeah. I would like to see this uh, kept on the front burner as well. I think it's uh, it's really something that's important, and if we can find a way to do it, I think um, it'll be great. So with that, um, maybe we could defer the more discussion on the rink until um, until our committee whole discussion. And if we want to bring forward a resolution or or something along those lines, we can do it for perhaps our January council meeting. Yeah, I agree, Your Worship. Okay. So you want to, I guess, move on. Uh, I'm I'm finished. Uh, recreation, Steve. Uh, Mayor Ogden and uh, I guess finance is next. Uh, yeah, yeah. If we um, if we could have um, Councillor Gail McDonald, uh, Chair of Finance, if we could give her report. Thank you for your report, uh, Councillor Gallant. Sorry Thank you. The mix up in the name there. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You ready for my report, Your Worship? Oh yes. Yeah. So if you could give her your re report, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McDonald. Sure, no problem. So uh, our last uh, committee meeting with uh, the committee that uh, has been meeting the last two years for finance and technology was held on November 17th. I as well would like to thank my committee members, uh, Charlene Morrison, Khalid Shemi, Ian Burge, um, Paulette Solomon and Jody Jackson. Uh, some of those members are coming back for the uh, new term and we're going to have some new faces as well around the uh, table. Uh, so my report from that uh, uh, committee meeting is in your package. Um, if there's any questions uh, that anyone has about it, uh, feel free to um, ask. And if I can't uh, answer, I'm sure my uh, finance director would be available as well. Um, I have the... Um, also the town income reports and the utility income reports are in our package and I have a resolution to, uh, to vote on tonight. So if there's any questions on my report at this stage? Any questions for Councilor McDonald? Uh, Councilor, Councilor uh, Derek Smith here. I noticed that you did talk about the non-residence tax rate that you brought it to your committee. Thank you for bringing that to their attention. Yes, that's no problem. And we'll be bringing it forward to the uh, new uh, committee members as well, along with um, the presentation from the uh, non-resident to uh, so that they're aware of his uh, concern. Thank you. Councillor you. McDonald, I just have a question just regarding, it doesn't have to do with the report, but um, it just popped in my head. Um, and I'm just wondering about the approach is the approach going to be similar to other years as far as the budgeting process? Um, um, 
as far as like, um, when do you expect to do, there's one public consultation, we'll probably wait for the citizen budget piece to come into play or does that replace the public consultation on, we usually have a basically a public, um, a way public can basically put um, something in for the budget or request or whatever that may be. Um, is that is it are, is your plan to kind of fall in line with other years um uh, the way we've done in other years or do you expect any changes or uh, yeah we haven't uh, discussed uh, how the budget uh, process will uh, roll out there uh, yet um the finance director and i will likely talk about that closer to the end of the year and get our dates uh, organized for january and february um, the citizen um, budget uh, survey will uh, be part of the process, uh, but I also hope to uh, have it open once again for uh, public input, however that's going to look in our, in our COVID times that we're going through right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to remember other years, was that budget request kind of feed that we opened? When did that open other years? I'm trying to remember, and maybe you don't remember either. Hmm. For some reason, I thought it was open now, but I could. Yeah, wrong. yeah. It, it changed the year that the uh, that our year end changed. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So now there's there's no hurry to get it done uh, before into January sort of thing. So we'll look at a at a date likely in January or February. No other questions, uh, Your Worship. I can go on to the uh, income reports. Yeah, Councillor McDonald, uh, just a just a quick question here. I, on the um, uh, Office 365, there's uh, they're saying uh, that there's going to be training to commence soon. Is that for staff only, or or is that including councillors? I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Clo, I missed part of your question. The training on what? Kim, uh, well, in the report, Kim uh, uh, said the committee that the Office 365 training is to commence soon. Is that just for staff or is that for council and staff? No, that'll be for council as well. And once again, I just haven't heard the dates yet. Uh, uh, Kim, I'm wondering if you uh, have an idea of the dates. Uh, this new COVID restrictions may have uh, changed that as well. But uh, Kim, if you're able to respond there. Sure. Um, what we're waiting for is there's still we still need a few more people um, to get the multifaceted authentication done with Kent. Um, so everyone has to get that part done before we can start the training. So we haven't set up the training sessions as of yet, but uh, we're, we're down to a very few people left to get that set up. And then we can look at setting up some training sessions. But yes, now that the COVID restrictions are back in place, um, it is going to be a little bit more challenging. It'll have to be done by Zoom. And, and I know it's a little bit harder for some people um, to pick up uh, the training whenever it's done done that way. But uh, we will uh, get them set up. And yes, council will be invited to the training. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Uh, so the town income uh, report is in your package uh, for the uh, month of November. We are um, down in revenue by uh, 5%, a little over 5%. And our expenses are down uh, a little over 13%. So, and most of that is, is uh, COVID related sort of thing. Um, the utility report is also in your package, the utility income report. Um, our revenue is actually up by 147%, but that's wow. um, due to the government grant that we receive that we uh, don't actually put in our budget. So of $2,355,982. And our expenses for utility are down about 12%. Um, are there any questions on that? Um, feel free to ask now. Otherwise, uh, I can move on to the resolution. Yeah, please, uh, please proceed. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, resolution number FT0016-2020, Pipe to Charlottetown Sewer Project, Long-Term Financing. Whereas the town of Stratford is currently constructing a wastewater delivery system to Charlottetown, 
The expected date of completion for the pipe work and pumping station is December 31st, 2020, with the decommissioning of the lagoon system completed in early 2021. And whereas the project is being funded through the Water and Wastewater Infrastructure Program, with the Stratford Utility Corporation share being $2,731,250, and whereas we requested proposals for long-term financing for $2,731,250 from the following financial institutions, Bank of Montreal, CIBC, Royal Bank, Scotia Bank, and TD Bank. And whereas the request for proposals closed at 1.30 p.m. on December 7, 2020, and whereas the Stratford Utility Corporation portion of the project is within the 10% capital debt threshold of the town of Stratford, the current borrowing limits for the town of Stratford based on our total assessed tax base of $829,534,696 times 10%, equals $82,953,469, of which the town of Stratford is using $8,839,771 as of March 31st, 2019. And whereas the tender provided two options for bidding, option one was a fixed term loan amortized over 25 years, and option two was a banker acceptance loan amortized over 25 years. The following rates were received for option one. Uh, and um, the chart is uh, in the uh, resolution there. Um, is it necessary to read it in, uh, Robert? No, that's okay. It's in the resolution. Okay. Thank you. And so option two, all uh, the um, uh, the different rates are there from TD, RBC, and CIBC. So be it resolved that the long-term financing of the Pipe to Charlottetown sewer project be awarded to RBC Bank for a 25-year swap term at a rate of 1.72% and a credit spread of 0.45% for an all-in rate of 2.17%, subject to market fluctuations prior to closing. <clears throat> this resolution bears the recommendation of the Finance and Technology Committee as uh, submitted via an email poll on December 7th, 2020, so moved. A seconder. I'll second Derek Smith. Okay, uh, any discussion? Any, any discussion on this? Anything, any comments? Um, Councilor McDonald, anything you'd like to uh, point out that uh, this is the best rate? This is a recommendation from the um, Finance Administration Committee um, and um, are there any, any other considerations or anything like that you'd like to uh, mention? No, I don't think so, Your Worship. Uh, uh, we, we did get a, a better rate than we did for the emergency services uh, building, so that's a plus. Um, if there's anything further that Kim might like to add to that? Uh, no, like the rates are really good for bank. We've, we've had success um it, i guess that's one thing about COVID. we're getting really good rates on these big loans that we happen to be uh getting for the emergency services center and now the pipe to charlottetown project okay any other discussion if not uh i'll call for the question all those in favor aye, aye. 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 those against motion carried Okay, and that's my you. that's my report, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you for your report and resolution. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to uh, planning, development, heritage, um, and I'll ask Chair Jill, Councillor Jill Burridge, to um, to give her report. And I believe you have a resolution as well. I do. Thanks, Mayor. Um, we just had a meeting on Monday. Um, there's no report in the package um, for Monday's meeting. Um, Basically on the agenda Monday, we had this new subdivision that we're going to has a resolution on um, for we had that on the planning committee's table to discuss and make a recommendation on. Um, so we'll get into that a little later. Um, also, I guess the other key item on there is the official plan review, which is ongoing. Um, 
basically right now what's happening is there's a lot of in-house um, um, engagement. Um, the town planner is seeking department reviews on applicable policy. And um, they're also, and then he's also presenting that to the planning committee as well to seek some feedback and input there on any changes that he is proposing to make within this review. Um, so those were the two big items discussed Monday. If there's any questions on either of those, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'll move on to uh, building type summary spreadsheet. Um, so basically year to date, 53 dwelling units, um, two 12 unit apartment buildings, 23 commercial permits. Um, this year we've had a lot of accessory buildings and accessory structures, pools, decks, that kind of thing. Um, so the breakdown is there for you. If, you're, if there's any questions on the building type summary, please feel free to ask away. Otherwise, I'll move on to the development permit summary. Um, <clears throat> just like every every town meeting, we have um, we have the by month summary, the specific um, development permits that have been um, sought through the town staff. And beyond that, we have the um, year to date, the month the month to month, 2019 to 2020 comparison and then the year to date for 2020-2019 just so you can orientate and have something to compare it to. Um, as far as on our budget year to date we're 11,000 off our budget at this time um, so we're hanging in there. Um, year to date 37 million as opposed to 46.5 million at this time last year. Um, there's a little bit more commercial this year um, and there's been a significant increase in single family um, from last year and there's a lot of a lot less departments there's some big apartment buildings that went up last year and so it only takes a couple of big ones to make a significant difference there but um, those would be I would say the highlights out of this report if anyone has any questions on that feel free Looks like all good news. We're almost triple um, our November from last year. So that's uh, that's really good news. Yeah, we had a good November for sure. Yeah, your single dwellings there too, Jill. Uh, gone 275 up to 620 was not good. Not bad, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like your uh, single family... Yeah. 2020 this year was 21.5 million last year was 14.7 million so definitely okay, yeah. a big increase there yeah yeah you're probably looking at the monthly cv yeah or councillor lance sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so if there's any questions feel free otherwise i'll move on to the resolution the resolution is um it is a uh, subdivision um, it's 22 lots off Franken Drive, which is, it is zoned R2, um, and it is as of right subdivision. So they're staying within the, the uh, as of right use within the bylaw. So um, I can move forward with the resolution, Mayor. If... Yeah, please, please proceed. All right. Okay. Number PH022 2020 SD017 20 102519 PEI Inc. Jackson slash Livingston 22 lot subdivision Rankin Drive. Whereas an application has been received from 102519 PEI Inc. Jackson slash Livingston to subdivide parcel numbers 839365 and 876276, approximately 3.818 her, hectares in total area, into 22 lots located off Reagan Drive within the medium density residential zone R2. And whereas the concept plan has been revised based on comments received from planning staff, as well as recreation department staff, 
And whereas within the medium density residential zone R2, a developer is permitted to have up to 40% of the units within the block to be duplex, semi-detached or townhouse dwelling units with the remaining to be single family dwellings. The total area of the proposed subdivision is approximately 3.81 hectares, 9.43 acres. And the developer is proposing 14 single dwelling lots and eight three unit townhouse lots. And whereas the developer has proposed 4,270 square meters, 11.2% of the total area for parkland dedication to the town of Stratford pursuant to section 4.9 of the town of Stratford zoning and development bylaw, excluding the 960 square meters area proposed for stormwater management. And whereas the recreation department have reviewed the proposed subdivision and agree with the proposed parkland as shown. Be it resolved that preliminary approval be granted to an application from 102519 PEI Inc. Jackson slash Livingston to subdivide parcel numbers 839, 365, and 876276, approximately 38,138 square meters in total area into 22 lots located off Rankin Drive within the medium density zone R2, subject to the following conditions. Conformance with the preliminary plan showing lots 2020-1 to 2020-2022, prepared by Mantha Land Surveys, File number 2020-S-9, comma Rev 1, dated November 30th, 2020. That a stormwater management plan be designed by a licensed engineer using low impact development guidelines approved by both DOTIE and the town of Stratford. That the proposed parkland area, as shown on the, on the preliminary plan, be deeded to the town of Stratford as parkland dedication totaling 4,270 square meters, 11.2% of total area, excluding the 960 square meters proposed for stormwater management pursuant to section 4.9 of the bylaw. That the concept design must meet all Department of Environment requirements and a plan must be prepared showing how erosion and sedimentation will be controlled and contained during construction. That proposed public roads shall be designed in accordance with the provincial road stand standards of PEI Department of Transportation, Infrastructure and Energy, and that a subdivision road shall be executed. So subdivision road agreement shall be executed. That the sewer and water system shall be designed in accordance with the Stratford Utility Corporation servicing standards and that a utility agreement shall be executed along with the payment of all applicable capital contribution fee required by the utility corporation. That the developer makes an agreement with Canada Post and meets Canada Post requirements for establishing community mailboxes and new subdivisions that all other relative provisions of the Town of Stratford Zoning and Development Bylaw, Bylaw number 45 are met, and that preliminary approval shall be valid for a period of three years. This resolution bears the recommendation of the Planning Heritage Committee as discussed at a meeting held on December 7th, 2020. So moved. I'll second it. Oh, thank you, I was muted. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, thanks. Thanks for your resolution. Uh, any discussion? It was a mouthful. Yeah. Yes, I have one question. Uh, I'm a big trails guy. Uh, the trail system within the town is going to be hooked into this subdivision, I believe. It is actually. It's. It was a key consideration and a and a key point of discussion and planning and in uh, coordination with the recreation department. They identified a really nice. It, it works with the Concord development that's, at, that's next door. So um, the parkland dedication on the south end of it, and Kevin's probably trying to bring the map up. Um, there's parkland at the south side, which is gonna work really well with, um, it's gonna expand uh, an existing open space, uh, Town and Stratford open space. It's gonna, um, You'll see with 01 right there, um, it's marked 01 with a red line around it. That's existing town, town land right now, dedicated park space. Yep. And this, the south end of this subdivision is going to build quite a chunk onto that. Yeah. As, as well, Kevin's probably gonna go to the Concord development to show the trail that um, exists within the new Concord development. Um, it runs the line there connecting that South Park and it's going to connect to the North Park dedication that they're putting at the okay. North end of this. 
Oh, okay. Does that makes sense. Kevin might do a better job of explaining this, but they've certainly taken this into account, and I think they're building in a very nice, uh, very nice um, trail system with green space and resting areas, and into this, into both developments, they work together. I must say that the planning department has handled this file very well. I'm very impressed with this site. Yeah. yeah, Kevin, Kevin, you might want to make some further comments there. Um, you're the one that was kind of doing the day to day work on this. So um, maybe you can highlight some key points that came up through those discussions. Sure. Uh, thanks, Councillor Burge. Um, just trying to show what you're seeing on the screen. Um, this is the new proposal. There was a key plan I was showing in the original slide just to show you where you are. This is yeah. Rankin Drive, Bunbury Road. Uh, Ren Drive. Um, so there's two parcels of land between Rankin Drive and the Concord development. So as I slide, uh, as I slide this over, this is actually the preliminary uh, concept plan for the Concord uh, property here. So that would be this R2 section of land here. Um, oh, it's regenerating on me. Um, so the parkland, the linear parkland strip that Councillor Burge was referring to is along here. So it's along this common boundary line. Um, and it's gonna take us right down in the Concord property development. It was gonna take us out to, to this proposed street A, which is out through here. Um, we're, uh, there's proposing to be a piece of parkland here, which would be accessed by that trail. There's proposed to be um, a piece of extra parkland added on here. I'll go over to the drawing. Um, so an extra piece of parkland added here next to the existing park and that'll add then the the Concord development will also add parkland um, when it's developed that will front out on the new street so it will make a really nice uh, large park which was only served originally by a small little access point off of uh, Ren Drive. Um, there may be some changes to the stormwater management system for um, the Concord properties um, that again will tie in with this linear parkland. Um, but those, those are there's some negotiations ongoing with that, and uh, and if anything does uh, come of that, we'll be bringing it back uh, to council for their for their approval as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just a general overview. Somebody had a question there. Nope, nope. Just a general overview of the subdivision. Uh, the main entrance is off of Rankin Drive. Uh, you come in, this is a stormwater retention pond, um, all single dwelling lots um, along this side, backing up against the existing homes on Rankin yeah. Drive and on Rankin. Um, any of the ones you see with building structures on them, those are three unit townhouses. So there's a total of 22 lots. Eight of those lots are um, above uh, single family dwelling, which is allowed. That's 40% of the, of the lots are allowed to be above um, a single dwelling. Um, so that's where we're getting a total of uh, um, 20, uh, sorry, 14, 14 single lots and eight um, three unit townhouse lots, um, okay. which is all within the permitted uses. There was, I will, I will, uh, I'll give the developer credit. There was a, the number of revisions that have happened to this plan um, to get it back to where it was. We've had good good conversations with Department of Transportation regarding stormwater management, um, utility servicing with our infrastructure department and the park locations um, with our recreation department. And uh, we were quite pleased to take this uh, to planning board on Monday evening and present it and show how it's proposed to integrate with the, um, the Concord, the preliminary approval of the Concord land um, to the to the east, um, so I think that generally um, lays it out. But if anybody has any specific questions, we'll certainly answer them for you. Is, is Kevin, uh, Steve, uh, Councillor Glant, um, on Ren Drive, is there a buffer for the house behind there, or not needed, or there's there always a buffer there? There, there's no, there's no dedicated buffer, um, Councillor Glant. It's single family dwellings backing up against. Yeah, um, okay. single family dwellings. There is one. There is one duplex here. Um, okay. So, so the design was to try and intend to put like uses backing against other like uses, but there is no requirement within the bylaw for an actual buffer. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this uh, proposal? If not, 
Uh, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? Motion carried. Thank you for your report, Councillor Burridge, and thank you for the resolution. Thank you. Okay, any, um, we'll now move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is infrastructure. Um, the um, infrastructure chair is Deputy Mayor Gary Klo. Uh, I'll ask him to give his report, and I understand you also have a resolution, um, Deputy yes, Mayor. Your worship, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we did have a, a, a meeting on um, November 16th, a Zoom meeting. Um, the minutes are in your package for viewing, if there's any questions. Uh, uh, the report for the month for infrastructure, uh, the wastewater treatment plant, uh, the facility is in its last weeks of operation. We have begun to prepare the lagoon for decommissioning, which will start with the removal of some of the items within house. We're also going to start removing the remaining sludge from the system in the coming weeks. Uh, this could cause some odors and fluctuation to the effluent quality. So uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't witnessed any of that yet. So hopefully we, we won't have to worry about that. And it will be the last time, hopefully, that we'll have to be concerned about that uh, odors. And uh, the wastewater collection system, the Charlottetown plant, pollution plant, uh, there have been difficulties obtaining products and information required to complete the remaining tasks inside the pumping station. The consultants and contractors are putting great effort into being ready to commission the station by the middle of December. The generator and automatic transfer switch that will, that will provide backup power to the station has been commissioned. Uh, inflow and infiltration reduction system, KAW construction has completed repair work on 59 manholes which will reduce the amount of surface and groundwater seeping into the sewer system. Monitoring and review of the sewer system to identify areas requiring repairs are ongoing. Investing in Canada infrastructure program, sewer lift station upgrades, Coles is working on the design with anticipation to construct in the spring of 2021, the utility captured uh, additional flow data to provide to Coles to assist with the design and waiting for an update from Coles. The water station upgrade, two bids were received on November 9th, 2020. The low bid was from Hanson Electric for $318,600 plus HST. And the second bid was from Birch Hill Construction for 591,000 plus HST. The budget is short, approximately $92,000 to complete the entire project. We are planning to reduce the scope of work to meet the budget and further information is included in the resolution that I'll be reading uh, a little later. The active transportation, provincial active transportation fund, the sidewalk is being poured this week with the only remaining work being the landscaping, which will most likely be completed in the spring of 2021. So I drove by there today and uh, they are working on the sidewalk there and it, it should be finished by, I'd say the end of the week. So. Hopefully that lo and it looks really great. Fullerton's washroom uh, facilities, the contractors coordinating the building inspection requirement to obtain the occupancy permit. Once complete, the building can be open to the public. And the natural playground in Fullerton's, uh, the contractors completing the work is coming from Nova Scotia and, and has encountered a delay due to the bubble closing. And as soon as permission is granted, for them to come to the island, they will begin the project. Uh, in addition to the above, infrastructure staff is busy installing the Christmas decorations, interior renovation, repairs and maintenance to our buildings, sewer and water inspections, decommissioning uh, seasonal buildings and equipment for the winter months, trail grooming and maintenance route to town, sewer lift stations, maintenance, uh, staff is in full pre preparation for the upcoming winter season, preparing equipment and collecting salt and material for treating surfaces and sidewalks. And during the month of November, there were no major issues with our water distribution or wastewater collection system. 
So that's my report, Your Worship, and entertain any questions. And if I can't answer them, I'm sure Jeremy can. Any questions for Deputy Mayor Claw? Right. Deputy Mayor, um, yes. I know this is not under your jurisdiction, but the pathway coming across the bridge, uh, I, there was an announcement on that the other day. Um, the only reason I ask, it does concern the drivers of Stratford. Yes, uh, I know. Uh, uh, I know today that they were uh, laying asphalt, which I was surprised to see at this lake, but they were laying asphalt today to complete the walkway along the uh, bridge on Charlottetown side. And they are working on Stratford side also. Uh, perhaps Jeremy can give you an update on the traffic. I'm hoping that uh, a lot of residents have been uh, talking about uh, those cement barriers, hoping that they're gonna come down before the snow flies. So uh, Jeremy, certainly I, I know can give you a little update on that. I do wanna I do want to caution you, though, uh, before we comment on that area, that uh, this is an area of provincial jurisdiction, and um, I know the province has uh, indicated that uh, they're not prepared to comment at this time. So I'll just, I'll just with that, I'll, I'll let you go ahead, Jeremy. I was just going to reiter re reiterate the same thing, uh, Mayor uh, and Councillor Clow. Uh, we don't have a lot of information on when they are going to remove those barriers. I know that construction is going to continue until, uh, as weather permits, uh, they're trying to get as much done this year as they can. They probably won't finish on our side uh, this year, and there is going to be some further work done in the spring, but uh, I don't have confirmation on when those barriers will be removed, and that really should be something that's answered by the province. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. No problem. Any other questions uh, before I move to the resolution? <clears throat> No, I congratulate you, Councillor Clo. In uh, two weeks, this uh, uh, the pipeline is going to go. I guess the our lagoon is going to be covered in and shut down. And two weeks to go across the city of Charlottetown. And I know yourself and Mayor Ogden, Jeremy Crosby, Robert Hughes. Uh, nine years of getting this done. It's a uh, it's a uh, very uh, demanding and so on. It's it's uh, it's it's going to look great. It's going to look great when it's all done. So. That's off to you guys. It's great there. Thank you, Councillor Glenn, for that. And uh, it's been go it's been ongoing, like you say, for nine years, and it's finally coming down to oh. I don't know if it's cutting the ribbon or just turning the the, the wheel to, to let her go. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it's certainly going to be a, a a pleasant and an exciting moment to know that that everything will be going to Charlottetown, and uh, and that uh, and that'll be better for Charlottetown and Stratford, especially. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to, just want to mention that uh, Jeannie Glant had a, had a large part in the project manager, management of this project and uh, the success of it. So uh, it'll be nice to see the uh, the valves turned on and everything working properly here, hopefully by the end of the month. Yeah. Well, it's just you. consistently wonderful across the board with the with the active penetration and the, and the Hillsborough Bridge and the waterfront and everything else. And it's just it's just tremendous. It's, it's great at that whole corner. Uh, the business in that corner too is going to be appreciated and the part and, and people in that area, that apartment building and so on. So yeah. it's just like, like I say earlier, Stratford's just growing. It's good that way. Yeah. And, and I, I had trouble visualizing just exactly what the province was doing there, but now it's quite clear and it, and it looks pretty good and it looks pretty safe for the residents to bike, walk, run or whatever. So yeah. really happy with that. It took a long time for that to come too, Councillor Glant. We've been fighting for that for years. So finally it's here. <laughs> It's the, for the bridge, uh, Councillor Poe? Yes, like, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, thank you. Um, I, I just want to, before we go to the resolution, I do want to um, mention that uh, this past week, we, um, we did, uh, uh, one of our uh, longtime employees uh, left uh, the town, uh, Billy Ramsey, uh, who was instrumental in starting the water school, which uh, has been going and has been a real, um, Feather in the cap of Stratford for, for a good many years um, and, and provide a lot of good information and, and really contributed to water conservation. He's been a great employee and we're really sorry to see him go. I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Billy Ramsey and wish him all the best uh, with his new uh, with his new job. Thank you, Your Worship, and I echo your comments. Okay, if you would uh, proceed with the resolution, that'd be great. Thanks, Deputy Thank Mayor. You. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's resolution number INC 004-2020 water station upgrade. Whereas the water station upgrade construction tender closed on November 9, 2020 
and whereas the following tenders were received, HST included. Hanson Electric, $318,600. Burt Hill Construction, $591,000. HST excluded both of them. And whereas a capital budget of $290,000 was approved for the water station upgrade, and whereas provincial and federal funding through the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program in the amount of $203,411.04 will be contributed towards the project. And whereas the cost of engineering design and construction services is estimated at $54,200 HST excluded. And whereas the total price of the project for the low bidder is $372,800 HST excluded. And whereas the tender for the low bidder included provisional items for adding lightning protection to the well fields in the amount of $117,500 HST excluded. And whereas by removing the provisional items from the contract, the contract price of the project will be $201,100 HST excluded. And whereas by removing the provisional items from the contract, the total price of the project, including engineering and design, will be $255,300 HST excluded. Therefore, be it resolved that the tender be awarded to Hanson Electric in the amount of $201,100 HST excluded. This resolution bears the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole at a meeting held on December 3rd, 2020. So moved. A seconder. Eric Smith seconds. Thank you. Okay, discussion. Any um, any comments, uh, Deputy Mayor Clow? I'll let uh, I'll let Jeremy uh, uh, speak to it. I know that uh, we were 93 over, and we we were, we're excluding the uh, lightning uh, protection. So, but I'll let him expand on that. Uh, I have a question in regards to the lightning rods. I'm sure that that'll be put on the radar that sometime in the future uh, we'll be be able to install those. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yeah, we we plan to do that in the future, and uh, we did check with our insurance company to make sure that it was okay for us to exclude that from the project this time. You know, we did have some problems with uh, a few lightning strikes at some of our well fields uh, over the past year, and uh, that was why we intended to have this in the project. But they understand that uh, you know we're over budget, and we do intend to do it at some point. So uh, they're okay with us excluding it at this time, and that's why we did remove it. It was a provisional item, also that we could remove from the contract uh, when the consultant prepared the document. Good, thank you. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? If not, uh, we'll move to the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Okay. Thank you for your report and your resolution, Deputy Mayor Glow. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay. We'll now move to Committee of the Whole. Um, and the minutes are included in your package. Um, any questions or comments on the Committee of the Whole? If not, we'll move to item number 15, sustainability. Uh, and I'll ask the chair of that committee, uh, Councillor uh, Darren McDougall to give the report. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. We didn't meet this month the sustainability and I have no report for this month. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Uh, now move to uh, the committee that I chair, accountability and engagement. Uh, uh, the minutes are, are in your package uh, of our meeting, which was held uh, November 19th. Um, and we basically talked about the um, request for proposal for um, the engagement strategy review uh, and talked about uh, how we can improve, uh, look at our current engagement strategy and, and how it can be improved um, and, and anything that should be uh, where we can you know, engage residents more or things that are working and things that aren't working and that sort of thing. So we also talked about the um, 2021 resident survey 
and how that can be improved and how we can integrate or, or uh, coordinate that with uh, some of our other engagement activities. As well, um, there was a recommendation that we do a, a business survey, a separate survey of businesses to, um, uh, to look at um, the um, things that we can do to either help businesses succeed in Stratford, um, to help them, encourage them to locate, new businesses to locate here, and to really do whatever we can to uh, remove any obstacles to um, their, the sustainability of these businesses. So. Um, we, uh, the committee was very much in favor of the business survey. And um, so um, we, uh, we will look at uh, doing it through a consultant. Uh, um, and we looked at the engagement stats and uh, they're continuing to, um, to improve. Uh, any, any other comments that you'd like to make, um, uh, Wendy? Uh, Wendy Watts, or is, do you have anything you'd like to add with regard to our last meeting? No, I think you've covered it all. In your in your summary. Okay, uh, that's my report. Any questions or comments on my report? Your Worship, uh, in, in the report there on the resident survey, I'm just looking at some um, good questions there, especially on the waterfront, Matt, uh, and and also questions relating to the pandemic. Uh, are, are those questions going to be on the survey? That's going to be coming forward. Uh, they have been uh, they have been forwarded to um, um, I believe um, Chief Administrative Officer Hughes and and uh, Wendy Watts, our engagement uh, uh, and business manager uh, Wendy were Wendy Watts were meeting uh, yesterday I believe it was um, perhaps you'd like to comment Robert or Wendy. Yeah, we we did have an initial meeting yesterday with the survey consultant and we discussed a wide range of topics that could be on the. Um, the survey as potentials and and these were certainly on the list and we'll be continuing to do some exercises to go through and and decide which ones uh, are relevant in respect to the waterfront questions um, because that process is is underway and we have a separate consultant and process for that they probably won't be included because um, the information coming back on the annual resident survey will be received what after that consultation is already closed with the um, contracted consultant so that probably won't be one that, that we do, but. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Wendy. Welcome. If not, uh, we'll move on. Um, the uh, next item is uh, item number 17, human resources. Um, Deputy Mayor Klo chairs that committee. Yeah, nothing to report at this time, uh, your, your worship. Okay, thank you. Uh, item 18, uh, inquiries by members of council. Anything that we, uh, anybody would like to ask about uh, at this time? If not, we'll move on to other committees. Uh, Stratford Seniors Complex and uh, the new chair of that committee is Deputy Mayor Klo. So. Thank you, yeah, thank you, your worship. Um, the, there was a unit uh, vacant. I guess that's that that's going to be uh, filled on uh, February first. I guess they're they're doing work now, getting it ready. Uh, they did have a fire drill uh, in the building, and I guess uh, it's good they did that because uh, on the December sixth they did have a fire at the at the residence there. Uh, tenant uh, burned something on the stove, uh, set off the alarm in the building, so. It was a good exercise because just after having a fire drill, I guess they, they did have to vacate the building or whatever. So uh, thank goodness there was nothing serious uh, on that. Uh, all their decorations for Christmas is up and uh, the maintenance is being completed there for the winter, getting ready uh, for any snow or whatever we might get. And uh, they're working on the furnace door has been replaced and the bedroom windows are replaced for three units. So everything looks up and up and coming there. Uh, we haven't had a meeting yet. Uh, so this is a report that was given to me to, to uh, pass on, but uh, we will probably be in the new year in January be either having a Zoom or, or whatever uh, we decide to go with at that time. So that's my report, your worship. Thank you. I'd also like to at uh, this time Thank the outgoing chair of that committee, uh, Councillor Gail McDonald, uh, who's done a great job since she's been on that. Uh, he's been on that committee for, or headed up, chaired that committee for for quite a period of time. So, 
just want to express my thanks uh, to her for all the work she did on this uh, on this committee. Welcome, Your Worship. Okay, we'll now move on to appointments to the committees. Uh, we have a resolution uh, to appoint directors uh, to uh, Crossroads Rural Community Fire Company. And I'll ask the, um, the chair of um, safety services so responsible for the fire company, uh, Councillor Derek Smith, to, um, to present that resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> Town of Stratford Resolution number SS001-2020, appointment of directors to the Crossroads Rural Community Fire Company. Uh, there should be a correction on the resolution. It should read December the 9th, 2020, I believe. It says January 9th, 2019. Uh, whereas the town of Stratford has a right and a responsibility to appoint seven members to the board of directors, the Crossroads Rural Community Fire Company. And whereas councilor, a councilor intends to appoint two members each year for a three year term. So there is no regular turnover on the board but also a continuation with only two members per year. Be it resolved that the following persons be appointed to serve on the board of the directors of the Crossroads Fire Rural Community Fire Company for the year 2021. Town Council representation is Councillor Derek Smith. Community representation, Kevin Jenkins, first year of a three-year term, Carol Ann Duffy, first year of a three-year term, Chris Landry, first year of a two-year term, Dave Swan, first year of a two-year term, Dave Milligan, first year of a one-year term, and Kathy Livingstone, first year of a first of a first year term. The resolution bears the recommendations of the committee as a whole council from a meeting held on the 25th of November 2020. So moved by myself, Derek Smith. Thank you, do I have a seconder? I'll second that. Thank you. Okay, um, now I guess uh, these people have all agreed to, um, to serve on the committee. They've all been contacted and agreed to the, the terms, et cetera. Indeed they have been, yes. Great. Okay, any other comments or questions on the, um, on the resolution? Um, I just wanted to point out uh, the name Kevin Jenkins. Uh, Kevin, as we all know, was a mayor in the town of Stratford for a number of years, but his father also served on the Crossroads Fire Department for many, many years, and his family has been involved in this uh, project. Uh, they sold land to us, and I believe the family donated uh, some equipment to the Crossroads Fire Department. It's much appreciated, and uh, Kevin brings a wealth of information and knowledge on this file. So that's a great choice. Well, that's Councilor, great. Uh, Councilor Smith, is there only two coming back that uh, have been on before, uh, Dave Milligan and Dave Swan? The rest are all new members. Is that right? No, uh, Carolyn Duffy has been there for a number of years. And uh, yeah, and there were three new members. Uh, we Thank had you. one member for many, many years, has moved on to another board. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Okay, we'll call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary Aye. minded? Motion carried. Okay. Mayor, yes. Just one, I, I, I don't know if this is the place um, and this might be an afterthought somewhat. Um, and I don't know, I was appointed to a committee um, and I don't know if that falls under this heading or not, but it might be of interest to residents um, and others that, um, but I was appointed to, um, by the minister to the um, um, Stratford High School Planning and Design Committee. So um, I think, and, and the reason I, I was is they wanted a, a community um, representative um, um, to sit on that committee. And so I'm co-chairing with Dylan Mullally, who's also a resident, but typically they would have a high school administrator in that role. Um, so um, Dylan Mullally and myself are gonna co-chair that um, planning and design high school committee. So um, 
I just wanted to highlight it because it it is a, a great little partnership between um, the province Department of Education and the town of Stratford and for them to kind of carve out this place for us to sit on um, um, I think is going to be great in the developments of that school moving forward. So I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, thank you for doing that, uh, Councillor Burridge. I know, uh, you know, you're a busy person and, uh, you know, you're really helping our community provide that linkage between the town and the uh, Department of Education and the high school uh, planning committee. Uh, uh, so I really uh, commend you for doing this and, uh, and for accepting that, that position. Uh, I really look forward to, uh, to your, uh, you know, you'll bring a lot of, a lot of good uh, ability to the table and uh, really hope that uh, it, uh, it goes well. So best of luck and thank you. Yeah, I just want to clarify. I wasn't. I wasn't looking for praise, or I wasn't looking for anything like that. I just thought it would be of interest to council and of interest to um, the community to know that there is a space and a voice at that table for us. So I, I think that that's important, and I'm, I'm happy that the province is is giving us that space. So I think that's going to be fantastic. That's great. Thank you. I'd just like to mention that uh, just I want to congratulate Jill on that and I think that's that's a great great move for us for the town of Stratford. The only question I have is is that hopefully that's not going to interfere when it comes time to vote on issues would it? Uh, I'm just not sure of that. I'm just hoping it wouldn't interfere with uh, being on the board and then voting in, in the town. So is there no, it's not. It this is so. All this is is um. It's it's not the public school board or anything like that. This is just a, a committee that's set up to, um. It it has uh, TIE engineers, architects, uh, okay. an art engineer architect, just to design the school. Okay. Inside, it's inside the walls of the school. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't affect anything Good. that way i think it's i think it's just a great space for us to have a yeah, voice yeah. yeah yes it is I, I was just concerned about that that's all yeah i think it's very suitable too because uh you know you'll be able to carry forward your vision of the community campus uh to this committee uh, which i think is really really important you were the originator of that concept and i think uh, it's important that uh, you you know provide continuity to to making sure that um, you know, the decision makers, uh, you know, who are designing the school or proposing the new school, that they be aware of, you know, our community um, wishes with regard to the community campus. So I think it's going to be very important, as you say. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on this? Uh, Your Worship, are we into... Uh... Other business now, or are we just finishing up? Well, we're, just, uh, we're just to finish the appointments to committees, and uh, <clears throat> we're now going to go to proclamations. Um, <clears throat> this was uh, the week that the um, murder of those uh, 14 women, I believe it was, in, uh, in Montreal took place, uh, you know, years ago. And uh, every year, it's, uh, it's a, a, a month that we, we highlight the... Uh, you know, the importance of, of making sure that we try to deal with um, family violence and um, violence against women. So I just wanted to, um, you know, even though it's not a proclamation, I just wanted to make that uh, very uh, important uh, announcement that we do as a community uh, really uh, mark this occasion. Uh, and uh, so it is, it is an important, important um, thing for the community and for the, for the province and, and the country as a whole to really be aware of, uh, of this uh, this problem and and to do whatever we can to um, uh, to try to prevent and and deal with it. Yeah. Well, so we that, should also remember the Halifax explosion happened on the same day, a hundred years ago. So, yeah, it's a bad day. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, with that, uh, we'll now move to other business. So, uh, uh, Councillor Smith, did you have something you wanted to address? Yeah, I'm. I'm I, I just want to wish everybody in council, the town staff, the residents of Stratford, and especially those living in Ward 1, a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, and um, please stay safe. I would all like to do that. On, on behalf of the town, I'd like to say the same thing. So all the best of the holiday season to everyone. Okay. Anything else? 
If not, we'll call for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Thank you. We're now adjourned. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye now.